All right, these little brackets I got off of eBay for the stepper motors. Uh, versus having to make one, it's just worth it to spend a couple bucks. On. I want to say these were like $6, maybe $7 a piece. They're actually a little sturdier than I thought they would be. They're gusseted and uh, aluminum. Well, maybe they're steel. They got some weight to them. But either way, they're uh, they're definitely sturdier than I thought they would be. And, you know, already drilled and whatever else. So sometimes it's worth it to spend an extra couple bucks. Uh, for right now, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order some other hardware. I'm just kind of going with what I have here. I don't feel like running all the way out to the harbor store just to get the, something to put it together right now. But um, just throwing some 1024s through them and some lock nuts on the front. You can't put the nuts on the back. It just won't work. There's not enough clearance in the little, uh, in the little recesses there, the stepper motor. So some 1024 Phillips through this way with the lock nuts there. And then I'll zip off the excess of the stud. brackets I had to slightly grind these slots a little bit wider so that the threads of these uh, 1024s would pass through I don't know what size they expect you to use on it it's not like 1024 is all that a larger aggressive of a thread but either way what am I doing let's put that in the bottom hole I'm talking to the camera and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Yeah, it's about right. Get that in there. The alignment's pretty good. I worry that these gears, they were smaller than I thought they'd be, and the belt's definitely a lot punier than, punier than I thought. This belt looks like something that should be on like a tiny tabletop 3D printer. But um, we're gonna give it a shot and we'll see. This is one of the reasons why there was some things that I Bought that I don't know if I'm going to put in like a parts list or not. We'll have to see. That might get changed out for something a little more heavy. Okay, so I cut two of these small coupons. And the reason we did that is we need to elevate this. Um, not just so we have clearance here, but over on the other side. Where where you got the step of motor mounted. You can see that's pretty much just the right height to keep that from canting at all. And yeah, I have this mounted backward only because I didn't drill this out to the larger size yet. So right now it's only a six millimeter bore in it. So that's why I have the skinny end of it stuck in there. But the center line's still the same, so it works for this purpose. So that gets me the right height where when I only had a single one on here, we would have had to come up with a way to shim this. Um, and I don't really want to do that. So what we're going to do here is these, these two coupons together, they get the height pretty close. And what we'll do is, like I said, we'll drill this out to the correct bore, um, eight millimeter, I believe. 
and so we can spin it around and get it on there. And then if it is still off a little bit, like it kind of looks like it is, the angle is still slightly, you're still putting a slight cant in there. We could always just very lightly shim underneath the bracket to straighten it out. But my guess is that that minimal difference um, shouldn't cause any binding issues. So I think we'll be all right on that one. So what I'm going to do now is uh, on either side, get these two coupons welded together, just tack them on the corners, and then we'll, uh, we'll weld them to the gantry beam itself before we drill them and tap them. different ways to get this mounted and one of the ideas I had was this to be vertical and then once the z-axis gets put on there we'd have a piece here but we'd have to make an L bracket then I thought maybe it could go this way and we'd use spacers in between but there's captured nuts um, on the actual Z that move up and down through the uh, extrusion and then obviously you lock down wherever you tighten them so instead, what I think we're going to do is um, made a center line on this, center line on that. We're going to get this mounted up. It's actually going to lean back at an angle, which is going to line up. Uh, which is going to line up like this. Get those lines, scratches, centered up on each other. And we'll get that more or less locked in place with a magnet just to hold it. And it'll be back at an angle, but that'll be just fine. And then what we'll do is, this will be back like that. 
and then that'll weld on there. And I really can't see a reason why that won't work well. Getting well ready to weld these uh, support bars in under the table, obviously, but they'll uh, that's about the spacing I'm gonna go with. So they'll support the water table uh, nice and flush so that the water table is already bent with uh, two inch high sidewalls. So then, once the water table's in there and you get the slats situated, it should be uh, nice and flush with the top of the table. Um, water table didn't come out as well as I was hoping for uh, it's 48 inches by it's 30 30 inches or 28 inches I think uh, it's 30 inches 48 by 30 is the actual interior diameter or interior dimensions of that water table now uh, this is aluminum that I had laying around I think it's 30 five thousandths um the bends didn't come out great i'm probably gonna take it I, i'm not great at tig welding thin aluminum like that but i'm gonna give it a shot um if not then I'll, I'll come up with something else to seal those corners better but this didn't bend quite as well as i wanted it to uh i have one of these harbor freight uh finger brakes if you want to call it that with the shear and the, and the slip roller uh, but that only accepts up to a 30 inch width. So that obviously wasn't gonna work for this one. So then I have under here, in the back. All right, that air compressor finally stopped. But in the back there, there's a, I have a four foot uh, bench top brake. That one's actually constructed out of aluminum. So I didn't think I'd have any issues bending this since it's such thin gauge aluminum. But as you can see, it was it actually did a pretty bad job. They're, they're decently tight on the edges, but the radius of the bends is not ideal. Um, it probably looks better on video than it does in the life, but in reality, the radius of the bends is kind of kind of crappy, and so it makes the dimensions not quite right for it. But um, I'm going to give it a shot like that. And worst case scenario, if it just won't work for whatever reason. If it's just aesthetics, I'll let it fly. But if it makes fitting it up a little bit goofy, um, I'll just have to pick up some more aluminum. And I, I have a buddy down the street who has a large uh, finger brake that's uh, I think four foot or maybe a little bit, little bit bigger. So if we have to do that, then we'll just do it that way instead. But um, we'll get these welded on the
sufficient so we made this it'll be a one inch gap all the way around the table obviously I just have it sitting in here now so you can move it around to wherever you want but it'll be a one inch gap and um, we'll just cut out a piece of I have one inch uh, square tube we'll cut out a couple blocks just as spacers to use one in each corner just to keep it uh, centered in water table position where you want to be. Probably slap a coat of paint on even though it's aluminum. Uh, just to try to help with any kind of corrosion. There's a very nice drawing of a duck that my four-year-old did. It's a shame to cover it up, but what are you doing? And again, like I thought might happen, the uh, that radius that I had in there from the from the bench top break, because it's not tight enough, you can see where it's actually still bowing out, and the spacers would have made it. They keep it pushed in, but they would have made it. They would have dropped right in there, nice and snug, if there had been a nice, crisp 90 degree bend on those. Um, I still think I can make it work though. We're just gonna have to get those spacers in there. And then we gotta do the same on the on the sides. Probably, you know, four of them, two on this side, two on this side, just to ensure that it's all centered up and one inch away. So I just need to quickly uh, redub this section of the video. There's too much background noise going on. So basically this is gonna end the second video in the series. I think we made a decent amount of progress here and we're a little over 20 minutes. So uh, part three, we will finish up the remainder of the water table, getting the slats mounted. We'll also get all the wiring done and the mounting of the drivers and uh, all the electronic components. Uh, we'll probably have to do a fourth video and in the fourth video, we will get it disassembled, get it painted up, make it look somewhat nice and all put back together. And obviously, of course, have to try to get in some test cuts to prove this thing's actually working and hopefully working at least decently well but uh just wanted to say thanks for the views and uh, the thumbs up and the comments and uh if you could please subscribe it helps the channel thanks a lot see ya